everyone, how's it going? I hope your day is going great. If not, I hope it gets better. Thank you so much for taking time to be here with me today. I do have the old backdrop today because um, I got my new camera batteries. So this setup for now is what works for me, but I did order a different kind of tripod so I can switch this way sometimes and have that like pink chair, lamp, background, whatever. But I do kind of need to be here today because I'm doing a full face application and I want you to be close enough to really see what's going on. Also, I gotta say, shooting on the iPhone, it did do some favors on the skin. It's not quite as sharp as this camera. So anyways, I'm glad you're here. I'm gonna take a sip of coffee. This video topic came to me as I was noticing the amount of reviews some products have on Ulta's website. We're talking in the thousands, if not over 10,000 different reviews for just one product. And I really wanted to open up the discussion here about reviews on websites. Do you write them? Are you into reading them? How much do you pay attention to a product's rating before you buy it? Because on Ulta's website, you'll know if it's a top rated product, if it has five stars or nearly five stars. And then you can go down and you can read through the text of some of these different reviews. But when you filter what you're looking at by top rated, you will inevitably get some things where it's like a brand new product. It has one five-star rating. So I sift through that a little bit and I was looking for products that had thousands of reviews. And of those thousands of reviews, which ones had the most five-star ratings? And then those are the ones that I'm putting into a full face look today. So I think this is gonna be a lot of fun. We're gonna see if some of these products are worth the hype. Some of them we know are. I've definitely used them quite a bit on my channel, but it'll just be interesting to see what you think about some of these different things too. And again, let me know, are you a reviewer? I remember before I ever got into to YouTube before YouTube was even a thing, um, there was a website called MakeupTalk.com and you could post product reviews. And like I remembered looking up information, I was back in college. So we're talking between 2002 and 2006. And I remembered looking up info on different makeup products that I was interested in. And some of the high search results would take me to this Makeup Talk website. And I started leaving some of my own reviews there. And I think they had forums as well. Not like mean, nasty, gossipy forums. Like just sweet people talking about makeup. And then, you know, there was a whole review section, kind of like MakeupAlley.com too, which I eventually wrote some reviews on too. And if I would try a product, I would just, you know, write a little paragraph about it and post it there on MakeupTalk.com. So so it, maybe if I wasn't doing YouTube, I would like leave my review on some of these different websites where makeup is sold. Who knows? But for now, my reviews are for y'all. So for foundation, the one that I found that had the most five-star ratings was the Lancome Taunt Adol Foundation here. It had over 6,000 five-star ratings and I have it in 160 IVOW. This says up to 24 hour wear and comfort and transfer resistant. It also has SPF 15 in it. Long ago, I remember going to a Lancome counter and getting this foundation, like back when I was on the news but this more recently had come in PR. And then we're gonna be blending that out with the Real Technique sponge, which has over 5,000 five-star ratings. So Real Technique sponge, got the little wedge shape there. Um, I'm gonna dab this in. This shade might be just a hint light for where my skin is at right now. But the Real Technique sponge, you know, I've, I've used it plenty. I'm very familiar with it. It's a very soft, sponge. It doesn't have quite that little porous quality that the Beauty Blender has. And for that reason, I really love the Beauty Blender. But this certainly gets the job done and I like how it's bouncing things in a little bit better than that generic DG sponge that I used the other day. Dollar General, sorry. This is one pump of that foundation and it looks like straight up medium coverage to me. My skin looks more even. It looks very natural, but I'm really seeing like the freckles, some melasma. Um, so I'm going to actually build it up just a little bit more. I'm going to do like half a pump more and I'm going to hit those problem areas. I'm going to hit center of the face, nose. And also with the knowledge that when you use a beauty blender or a type of any type of sponge like that, um, you can possibly take down your coverage just a little bit because just the dampness of the sponge can just thin it out ever so slightly. But um, yeah, it's a nice foundation. It's just never ranked super high for me. It is long wearing, but see how it's giving me, especially with this application, just a more natural look on the skin. It's fine. And I think it's gonna come together with our concealer great. But let me know in the comments, is this your top foundation? Is this worth a five-star rating for you in your world? Because I was just kind of a little surprised to see 
that, but okay, we'll go with it. Maybe I'm just holding on to a little bit of the mentality that if I'm gonna pay Lancome prices, I want even more coverage. Like I want it to be more like Estee Lauder double wear. To me, this is lighter than double wear, uh, both in feel and in coverage. Next up, a concealer I found, and you're probably guessing what it is, with tons of ratings and over 9,000 five-star ratings is the Tarte Shape Tape, just the original Shape Tape. I have it here in light. This really was responsible for getting things going, for making a lot of brands kick into high gear, drugstore brands included, and turn out some very full coverage concealers. So I do think we can thank Tarte for that because as a result of this concealer, so many other brands chose to level up as well. They also chose to make their doe foot applicator bigger <laughs> to match this one. Why was that? Um, I'm just dabbing this in with my Real Techniques sponge, and um, yeah, for me, it's like, yes, this is a great concealer, I think. If you apply it without too much product. Um, it can just really work great on my skin. It can wear a long time. I can be super satisfied with it. But like I was saying, other brands jumped on this bandwagon and they stepped up their concealer game and we have things like e.l.f. Camo Concealer. So I don't feel like I need to go repurchasing um, shape tape. But as you can see, that really took us to full coverage. Wherever that concealer went, it kind of like blanked things out on the under eye area, around the nose. If you don't know about the texture of this, I would say it's a thicker liquid concealer. There is that new creamy version, which provides a little more moisture, but it was kind of interesting how e.l.f. actually beat Tarte to the punch on that one by putting out their hydrating camo concealer, so that was kind of funny. Probably not funny for Tarte, but I promise we are going to get into some drugstore in this video. The next product, however, when you're looking at powders, um, you'll notice that the Bare Minerals Original Foundation has so many reviews and over 10,000 five-star reviews, which is really impressive. And if I was going a different direction with the look and not using the foundation that I chose today, I could have used that. Um, but also powder-wise, the Laura Mercier Translucent Powder has also over 10,000 five-star reviews. Now, there are still more reviews than that, but if we're finding 10,000 of those reviews more than 10,000 to be five star ratings. I think that's really saying something. So I'm tapping out a little bit of my translucent powder into my cap here. Probably won't use all that I tapped out. Oh, and you know what I'm going to use? My little beauty blender pocket puff. This is so good. This little sponge puff duo thing here. It's kind of like spongy on one side and like a velour puff on the side I'm patting in with here. And I just feel like it works so wonderfully on the under eye area, like really gets you set. Still doesn't look heavy because you're kind of making that very pinpointed effort to press into the skin. Really liking it. And we're just taking this powder all over the T-zone, so I got nose, chin, forehead. Um, I think we're gonna have really great staying power with this look. But I love this powder. I think it always like adds this extra level of perfection to the under eye area whenever I see this setting that zone. But I will say, um, even beyond this loose powder, I think the Laura Mercier Translucent Pressed Powder is like the same result, but even more handy, like just a little more convenient than using a loose powder. So think about that if you're considering this product. Um, also, if you want to save on this product, the Maybelline Fit Me Powder in Fair is real similar to this one in the translucent. Now for bronzer, Physicians Formula Butter Bronzer has over 11,000 five-star reviews on Ulta's website. It's crazy. This is the most reviewed one so far. And I have it in my Sculpting Bronze shade. I'm not sure if this particular one is available on I know it's at Walmart, but I just really like the tone. It's much deeper than their original like classic butter bronzer, but I just really like the tone that develops on the skin. It just looks very natural on me. And I need some bronzer today because we got real light with the foundation and concealer and stuff. So yeah, when I was looking this stuff up, what I did was I set my filter to top rated. So the highest rated things would come to the top. But then I was looking for the first ones that I hit that had the highest overall number of ratings. And then when you check on those, you know, by the way it's all filtered, you'll see the products that are averaging out to be the highest rated. And you can check and see how many of those ratings are five star. As you can see, this is super easy to contour with. Uh, just a couple dabs in. 
Hitting that cheekbone area. Mm, feels good to have new fresh batteries in my camera today. And yeah, to be positioned the other way, what I ordered was like a tabletop ring light and tripod stand. So maybe then I can like, if, if I wanna be closer in and do a tutorial and have that background, I still can do that. Okay, now I'm really lightly getting some of this product on my brush, tapping off the excess and just really using this like bronzer, you know, where the sun would hit, tops of the cheeks and everything. Just giving the whole skin tone a boost. Now blush. Blush was the one thing in this whole look that I'm doing that couldn't even reach a thousand total reviews. The most reviewed blush was NARS and the amount of five star reviews in it was 865, um, at least at the time I was doing my research here. But it's just not a product that's drawing as much, uh, you know, passionate reaction as stuff like foundation and concealer, I guess. Honestly, I was kind of surprised that the butter bronzer got as many reviews as it did and then blush just couldn't measure up to that. So from what I could find, you know, you're looking at the top rated blushes and then the one that actually has the most five star reviews is NARS. And a lot of people are probably talking about Orgasm, which is just kind of like the go-to blush from that line. But I chose from my collection today, uh, I'm gonna use Torrid, which is this really pretty, like it's got a lot of life to it. It's got some shimmer, a little bit bright peachy pink, and I'm just gonna use that one today on my cheeks. And NARS does make great blushes, you know? But there are a lot of brands making great blushes these days, so maybe I just need to get on there and start <laughs> posting my reviews on Ulta's website so the blushes can get more love. This is so pretty. Oh, it's really not showing much shimmer, but the color itself is really doing it for me, this peachy pink. Lovely. And I just can't help myself from getting that on the apples of the cheeks. I know everybody says, you know, you can try a different blush style, you know, but I just love the apples of the cheeks to shine. That's what I like and I think we should all do what we want to do with our blush. For highlighter, the Maybelline Master Chrome Highlight had over 2,000 five-star reviews and so I have it here in the rose gold molten, molten <laughs> shade and this is like really intense. One of the most metallic highlights I own, you know, you get a little light swatch of it and you're seeing very intense color so if I use this and I don't want to go too over the top I'm just like dabbing in gently <laughs> and then like I like a slow build from there if I'm feeling it you know Definitely start light with this build to where you want to be but I do like the color tone as you can see it's really brightening when that highlighter craze was really getting going this was Maybelline saying hey high-end brands, we can do that too. It is super pretty. I've got just a little bit on my brush here and then I kind of swirl on these areas, um, kind of going up above the brow. Light's just kind of hitting me there type of look. I'll put a little on the Cupid's bow too. But I didn't look into the setting miss. I bet All Nighter has got to be way, way up there. I'm gonna go ahead and use All Nighter on that assumption and I'll look up the numbers for you later. Okay, so ready, go. You can always count on All Nighter, absolutely. If it's a special event, if you got a big thing, this is great. Um, the next best thing I think is the Catrice HD Active Performance Freezing Spray. That's really good too. All right, for brows, are you able to guess the um, highest rated product with the most five-star reviews? If you said ABH Brow Wiz, you're correct. I've got it here in dark brown and that's what I'm gonna use today. It really is a great little product. I mean, I love the way it goes on to the skin. I like it for not being too goopy, but really just getting the job done with ease. I feel like I'm gonna sneeze. Hi, <laughs> Chihuahua. But that being said, you're also gonna find, um, yesterday when I looked, Nick's micro brow was also way up there, but that's one of many great drugstore options. You know, you got so many options, literally every brand, you know, Maybelline's got one, L'Oreal's got one. If you want a skinny brow pencil like this, you can find it and spend half to a third of the amount of money as, ABH costs you. But the little thing that we've talked about before is maybe the shade selection is not as extensive as ABH is giving you. So if you've got kind of a hard to match hair color, I could see you go into this and really getting set on your, your one special shade, right? And then of course they have the thicker pencil too. So you don't have to go skinny with it. But this dark brown tone, I had medium brown for a while, but the dark brown is really perfect for me.
The one thing I wasn't loving about my new uh, setup that I had to just rig up, it's hard to call it a setup because literally the only thing I did, I, all these lights were sitting here the way they were. I just turned this way and my phone was like right over here. And the only real problem with it was the fact that one side of my face was getting all this light from the ring light and my brows looked like two different colors and everybody's being so kind, you know, like about how they like the background and everything, but my face was, not really lit very well. Eye primers, I was really disappointed to see that Milani eyeshadow primer didn't have in the tens of thousands of positive reviews. Urban Decay Primer Potion probably did have thousands of five star reviews, but I don't own that right now, so we're just gonna go with our friend Milani, which works just as well, if not better. And then eyeshadow palettes. The eyeshadow palette coming out is highest rated with the most five star reviews. ABH Modern Renaissance has over 12,000 five star reviews. Over 12,000 five star reviews, and that's not even the most five star reviews that we've got in this video, actually. It has 16,000 five star reviews. Think about what that could be. Don't look ahead in the info box. So, I got my modern Renaissance here. I'll admit I haven't used this in quite a while. So, what to do, what to do. I think I'm gonna go into a little burnt orange over here. These shadows are so soft. As you know, if you've got an ABH palette, you just don't want to make the mistake of scrubbing into one of those shades. Just a gentle tap in and boom. Color, easily blendable. I see why it's so popular, but we all probably know that the bulk of reviews probably come in when something's a little bit newer. So who to this day is using this palette regularly? Or have you found a dupe like, I know Wet n Wild made something really similar to this. Okay, still going in with the burnt orange, just getting it nice and even. Very good, very good. Then I'm gonna take a little tempera right here. Just a little bit of that shade is my under the brow highlight. That shade has the slightest teeny bit of sheen in it, but it also really softens the edges nicely of whatever else you have there. Then to the crease, let's go with this real warm terracotta. Let's warm that puppy up. Beautiful. Oh, the blending experience with these mattes, I mean, it's very satisfying if you like mattes. And really this palette is mostly matte. You know, you've got a couple of pearly shimmers, um, antique bronze over here has some shimmer, but lots of mattes and lots of rosy directions. I was kind of like forcing myself a little bit out of the pure rosiness with some of these other warm shades you can go with. I'm gonna grab a little Cypress Umber, this nice deep brown, which I think we really need because we've got so much kind of pink tone stuff going on. A lot of vibrant shades, and I think we need this brown in this palette for sure. And I'm dabbing that on my outer lid. Ever so slightly introducing that to the crease too. And then with a bit of red ochre on my brush, just a little bit. I'm gonna take that right to the crease, and that's gonna kind of be our rich, blendy sort of shade that takes the darkness of that brown and merges it in with the warmth that we had going there already. Just a little red ochre. Oh, is anybody getting a little bit of a nice, toasty fall vibe from this look? Just that, that warmth coming out. Yes, oh, that looks so good. I'm gonna take a little Primavera right here. So you look at Vermeer right above and that's more light and pearly and this one has a little more gold. And I'm just gonna take that dabbing with a flat brush. It wasn't the flat brush I meant to pick up, but just have it. Um, just dabbing it right in here. Innermost corner, letting it just touch that dark brown. It is so much fun to rediscover a classic, you know, uh, something that really is, I think, worthy of the high marks that it's received, and you haven't used it in a while, and you pick it up, and it's like, ooh, you know, who else? Who else is going to pick this one up today? I know you guys got it lurking in there somewhere. And I'm going to do, finally, just a little bit of antique bronze. So this has some shimmer. It kind of looks like a mauve bronzy, brownish shade. And I'm gonna be real careful with it because as we know, these shades do have a little, little fallout that they kick up. 
but I'm just really gently smudging that, smoking that out with my Profusion Small Pointed, just right there on the lower lash line. You know, it's giving me some depth, but it's not quite as dark as the um, Cypress Umber in this palette. And yeah, this is just kind of an idea of a look you can do with modern renaissance if you're not wanting, you know, all the pinkiness. The pink really stands out just visually as you look at the palette. You're like, oh, okay, this is going to have to be a berry look. But really, not so much. You just got a few shades that are really screaming that at you here. And we did use a little bit of the red ochre, but we're just keeping it kind of controlled and confined here. I'm going to do just a hint of blending on the outside, but I'm overall just very, very pleased with this eye look. With your ABH palettes, if you're new to them, uh, the biggest thing I would stress is just control. You know, go in, go with a light hand, because then your blending is going to be easy for you. You can build up little by little. You'll find that a little bit goes a very long way, and if you overdo it, I think you could be in a real mess. So just take it easy with palettes like this, um, with your soft glam, modern renaissance, um, sultry palette, whatever else. Now, my friends, the product with the most five-star ratings that I could find was in the eyeliner category, and we're talking Urban Decay 24-7 liners. Okay, they got tons of shades, so people could be talking about any number of different shades, but 16,000, more than 16,000 five-star reviews for these guys, and you know, they have been around a long time. I guess I shouldn't be shocked, but I just, I thought that was so interesting to find. So I've got zero here and looking up close, I can see I have a little fallout. Eek. Just a little bit. Could have been worse. But I'm gonna take my zero black eyeliner and just run it across my upper lash line here. Most of the way, and I'm gonna give it like just a little smudge. I'm not gonna do a big lashed look today. It's interesting, too, the different kinds of reviews you'll find on a website like Ulta. You'll find a very thoughtful paragraph on some products. You'll find one line saying, you know, it sucked. But that's why I think putting value in the number as a whole, you know, thousands upon thousands of five-star ratings, you look at those big numbers, and it really tells you a lot about the overall impression people are getting about this stuff. So I just did the zero liner right there, and then I want to do ABH double-ended highlighter pencil right in there in my lower inner rim, just for brightness, liveliness, bright-eyed and bushy-tailedness, or bushy lashness as we go into our mascara. Yes, I left the news in 2012, but mama can still segue. We've got Maybelline Lash Sensational coming out with over 3,000 five-star reviews. I will say the Monsieur Big from um, Lancome had many, many reviews, but I didn't have that one on hand right now. So we're going for the Lash Sensational. This is just the regular version. I thought over 3,000 five-star reviews, that's pretty good. It was right up there among, you know, the most top rated. So why that's important, why I think it's important to still look at it filtered under top rated most to least is because, you know, while a product may have thousands of five-star reviews, they have maybe not a lot of lower star reviews and the overall average of everything is turning out out to be one of the most top rated things. Okay, so I've curled my lashes with Shiseido Lash Curler, which is now available at Ulta, and I've got my Lash Sensational here. So this has that uh, rubber bristle brush with a little bit of a curve. The bristles look very short on most of it. A um, little bit longer bristles on the top of that hump but it's been a while since I've used this. This has a little age on it. It's not like dangerous age, but I just haven't used it in a while and it's building a little better than I remembered. I feel like I'm ending up with such a like classic look here. And part of why a lot of these products have so many reviews, they've been around a long time. You know, the 24-7 liners, gosh, those have been around forever. Bare Minerals having over 10,000 five-star reviews, that doesn't really shock me. That product goes back, I guess we can now say decades, right? With this mascara, I do feel like I'm getting nice length and separation. Um, I don't feel like it's chunking my lashes together. I think I probably was a little underwhelmed by the overall effect when this was newer but right now I'm seeing it build on itself a little more, in a little more satisfying way to me.
Sometimes when you don't like a mascara, you just gotta close it up, set it aside for a bit, get it out again at a later date, and see if your mind has changed. Here's a good question. Which are you more likely to get online and review? Something that was amazing for you or something that was awful for you? And like, how does that carry over to like different services as well? Maybe you feel that way more about like, ugh, the person who came and painted our house really did a terrible job and I gotta get on Google reviews and tell people about it. Like, are you more motivated when something really sucked. I should have let this eye dry a little bit more before I started going in and building more and more, but I'm overall real happy with the look. Fast forward a little bit, I just did um, Thrive Liquid Lash Extensions on the lowers, and I'm realizing this mascara does take its dear sweet time to dry. It's still drying, but I'm trying to keep it boosted so I don't lose that curl. But on lip products, a product that comes up very highly rated is the NYX Butter Gloss, but actually one that has more five-star reviews is the NYX Soft Matte Lip Cream. So I pulled out one that I have here. Um, I'd recently used Montreal. Today we're going to use Shanghai because this has a little more warmth, kind of like a warm-ish pink. I need more shades of this to choose from, but we'll go with this. So we're talking creamy, matte, comfortable. I mean, like more comfortable than I remembered. It wasn't that long ago that I pulled out that other shade and I was like really pleasantly surprised by how nice this can feel on the lips. It takes a while to get somewhat set, but I don't find these to be like as long wearing as a traditional liquid lipstick. These were like sort of being liquid lipstick before all those ones that set really were out. Outside of like the CoverGirl Outlast and Maybelline Superstay and stuff like that. Okay, do I want this to be a little bit darker or do I just go with it? I think I'll let it be light. It almost looks like a like a warm peachy nude practically. Uh, this shade right here, Shanghai. What do we think, friends? Full face only things with thousands of five-star ratings on Ulta's website. I'm really happy with so much of what I used. Trying to think what stood out the most, what kind of didn't make sense to me. The most pleasing like rediscovery and like, wow, this really is amazing kind of thing is probably Modern Renaissance. That is a beautiful palette. I love the look. I love the richness in that look. It can be very everyday, but you've got some kind of pinky fun pops in there. It's a really nice palette. This highlighter, I mean, for a drugstore price, you've got a highlighter here that can go subtle or it can go fairly dramatic, like whatever you want it to be. Um, really happy with that. Kind of disappointed in the blush department. As I said, you know, we all know about NARS blushes, but there's been so much more out there. And for the fact that these didn't even have multiple thousands of five-star ratings, that was kind of surprising. Um, I was surprised to see Butter Bronze are coming out with as much as it had, but it is a good product. You know I love the Laura Mercier Translucent Loose. Um, I like the Pressed even better, probably. This mascara, a nice little rediscovery for me, trying it again after I hadn't used it in a while. It worked better for me. The Tarte Shape Tape was no surprise. It really wasn't. This Lancome Foundation, you know, I know it's going to wear well. It worked so well with the other things, I must say. it. My skin does not look thick and foundation-y. Like, if you look up close, can you still see some of my freckles and whatnot? Like my skin looks pretty darn natural, but it looks so even as a whole, you know? So there, there's something to this stuff. And I know it wears well, which is a big part of its claims. Our little Real Techniques sponge. Happy to see that featured. I love Real Techniques. I love a beauty blender more than this one, but as you can see, it got the job done very nicely, did it not? Oh, and the Urban Decay 24-7 liners. I mean, that's another thing kind of like Brow Wiz. Really executes well, high quality product. But now so many drugstore brands have come caught up. You know what I mean? They've put out you know, a liner that goes on like a gel and sets and everything. So can't really say you have to go out and buy Urban Decay 24-7, just like you don't have to go buy um, ABH Brow Wiz. But their shade selections do make them a very tempting option still. But the number one thing that really made me think, wow, so worth those ratings was this Modern Renaissance palette. So thank you guys so much for your time. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know your feedback in the comments, and I will see you again soon. I love you. Bye.